This is the host of the Simpsons Did It podcast, here to talk to you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast, all in one place. Download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor colon fm to get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Simpsons Did It. I'm your host, Stephen Sklansky. And I am your co-host, Robert Sklansky. Yay, we made it. Episode 7. Yeah. Lucky Almost done with the... Oh, a little, uh, just about halfway through the first season. I know. that's It's kind of amazing, the reception we've been getting yeah. uh, for the podcast. Um, I mean, it's really nice just to see all the Simpsons fans out there that are following along and you know saying that we have one of the like one of the comments we got on apple was they they think we have the best simpsons podcast out there which is kind of awesome considering people have been making simpsons podcasts since like 2013 at least that's the earliest one i could i could find yeah that's Um, pretty good yeah good i mean i don't toot your own horn about our uh (laughs) our product or anything but um but yeah we uh finally broke i mean by the time this episode airs we'll probably have way more than that but uh, at the time at the time of this recording we have 50 followers on facebook and 60 on instagram um so, so hopefully by this time and when this podcast comes out we'll be well over 100 yeah which would be really awesome we got 15 subscribers um on the podcast but that's only on what our hosting site can actually see um, oh, okay at the end of the podcast, we'll tell you where you can find us, which is almost pretty much everywhere now. Yep. Um, but we'll let you know where you can hear us if you're listening to us on a specific app right now. Yes. Um, so episode seven, season one of The Simpsons uh, is called The Call of the Simpsons. It's kind of like The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Only, yes. it, only it's Call of the Simpsons. Yes. Um, it's air date, February 18th, 1990. And to give you a quick recap, the Simpsons RV goes over a cliff and Homer and Bart go for help and get lost. And then they also lose their clothes, which, which I, I do want to talk about when we get to that part. Yeah. Because I, it's just, it's very, so weird. It's so very, weird. very interesting. All so, right. Uh, one of the things I noted, because so in the open, when they push in the school, there's a building on the left side and I never could tell what it said. And this episode it was a lot clearer to see what it said. And so apparently one of the buildings that you see in the opening credits is called semi-painless dentistry. Ooh. And, and is, that on the, is that on the flyover as you come into the school? Yeah. So I was like, I mean, yeah, I guess most of the time when you go to the dentist, it's going to be semi-painless. Uh, but if, you know, you're not taking care of your mouth, it's going to be really painful. Yeah, so we'll so. we'll actually it'd be kind of interesting to see if that building changes as the years go on as well. That's kind of the other reason I wanted to note that is because does it change or does it stay the same the entire time? Yep. I mean, I fe- feel like in these newer seasons, the flyover to the school is a lot different because there's other things going on. Yes. Um, and sometimes there's not even a flyover of this to the school. So yeah. We'll have to see. So chalkboard, uh, Bart uh, must have <laughs> been bored in class because uh, he uh, will not draw naked ladies in class anymore. I, um, I mean, I, but he's I like never, a, he's in fourth grade. Like I, I know. And I mean, the only thing I could think of is he happened to get a look at the play dude from the previous episode. Yeah. That's the only thing I could possibly think of. I mean, I you really don't see the the Bart sexuality until I think second or third season when he you know falls in love with his babysitter. Oh yeah, who, who's who's in love with uh, Jimbo? 
Yeah. And then obviously you don't even see it later on until he kind of falls in love with uh, Reverend Lovejoy's daughter. Yeah. So that's really weird. I mean, I'd like to know who, who came up with that one. Yeah. That that's kind of a interesting take on Bart Simpson this, this early on. Yeah. Um, so the couch gag, Simpson sit on the couch and they all fit. Cut to TV. <laughs> that was <laughs> great. It. Yeah. I mean, they finally found a couch that fits everyone, but I do like that there was about a three second pause before yeah. the TV shot. Like they're like, okay, so because the past couch gags, if you remember, they all sat down and someone popped. Yeah. But this one, no one did. And I think that three second pause was kind of meant for you as the audience. Oh yeah, for sure. To, to be like, okay, who's, who's at this time? Is it Lisa? Marge? Mar- I don't, I feel like Marge isn't going to fall off the couch because she sits in the middle all the time. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so that was kind of kind of funny. Yeah, that was that was a good one. All right, so let's kick off the episode. Um, yep. So <laughs> uh, it's kind of starts Homer and Bart are mowing the lawn, and the first thing you notice is they have a push lawn mower, and kind of to to a point, this entire episode is looking at the Simpsons financially. They 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 kind of go over where the Simpsons sit financially, which still over the course of the entire show still doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah. one iota. Um, but Bart's pushing the mower and Fl- you look over at Flanders, Flanders is riding, you know, riding lawnmower. Yep. So I just want to point out that uh, the first commercially produ- uh, purchase purchasable lawnmower powered by a gas engine was 1902. The first gas mower, uh, first gas powered lawn mowers, which were manufactured by Colonel Edwin George, here in the United States, or was brought here in 1919. So, uh, I guess you know it wouldn't be uncommon for the Flanders to have a riding lawn mower. No, not in the 90s. No, I but just I was just kind of curious because you know the Simpsons had the push mower. I'm like, you know, I know they're not like. As as we find out as this episode goes on, they're but not. But if you remember that rich. 70s show, no. Yeah, what about but that 70s I mean, show? A riding, I mean, that 70s show. I believe the the uh, Eric and Red and those guys they had a uh, gas mower. No, oh, yeah. I don't feel like they. So they like were, they were dirt poor because they lived in quote unquote Racine, Wisconsin. Also known as Point Place in the show. Um, yes. But, like, I mean, as we find out uh, during this episode and, like, previous episodes, it's not like they're dirt poor. Like, I feel like they could afford a gas line mower, but clearly they didn't buy one. They have yep. a push mower. Yeah, and I do like the fact that when Flanders is, is over or the, the riding, you see Rod or Todd riding it. There is, because of the artwork and even... The artwork when in the very first episode, uh, yeah. since it's kind of open fire, you don't know which kid it is. Like the artwork, the way it was drawn, yeah, they're not a common place. So I don't know if the writers were thinking, does Flanders have two kids? Yeah, I feel like this is. I mean, it was so early on; it's only the seventh episode. Maybe they didn't want to give them two kids right away because maybe they're like, all right, we might not do like as many seasons as I've done, maybe they thought they'd do two or three. So they just limit. And then, you know, it'd be kind of interesting to see when you first see both boys. Yep. And the other thing I noticed is that I don't know if that he would be old enough to use a riding lawnmower. Cause I'm guessing he's around Bart's age of 10. And I don't know if I trust my 10 year old on a riding lawn. I mean, neither of us really started mowing the lawn until we were like 12 or 13. Yep, and that's even like that was still a push mower. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing it's not illegal to ride a riding lawnmower without a driver's license, obviously. Yeah. But I mean, you probably want to be around the age of knowing how to handle that type of equipment. Yeah. Um, but then, so here's kind of where you get into the finances. So Ned Flanders only makes twenty seven dollars a week more than Homer. Yeah. So. But then Ned makes it far better for use of his credit. So he, I, since I don't think the Simpsons have a credit card or maybe they, 
maybe they do. I'm not sure, but I mean, they they clearly, as we'll find out later on, the credit their credit is not the greatest. And I know, like, so when they went to go see Marvin Monroe, they had to like scrape every penny together to go see it, and they had to pawn off a TV. So what are they spending all their money on? Like, well, yeah, I mean, twenty seven dollars isn't. I mean, that's pennies. I mean, oh, yeah. in the grand in the grand scheme of a full paycheck, twenty seven yeah. bucks is, is pennies. So, and especially I, in nineteen ninety, I mean, twenty seven dollars will get you a lot. Yeah, I mean, I if you look around the Simpsons house, it does. They don't have a lot of nice stuff. I mean, it's it it's kinda, all plain. Kinda, exactly, it kind of makes you wonder what the Simpsons are actually spending their money on. Maybe they're just getting really expensive food. Well, like also, getting, like, but we also know stuff. Marge, we also know Marge doesn't work. So oh, you have, right. well, so I you have think... Homer supporting a family of five wow. plus the, uh, plus grandpa Simpsons in a home, which that can't be cheap. Yeah. So I, I mean, guess, I'm assuming Maude doesn't work though. I mean, I think she was just like a churchy, like she maybe helped out at the church. I think she must have been a stay at home mom. Yeah. Too. But then again, I mean, at this point, we don't technically know that Ned owns the Leftorium, but my assumption would be is that's where he's working? Yeah. And I guess left handed people are shopping like crazy now because you, as you learn in the future, there's no Leftorium anymore. Yes. All right. So. <laughs> After that, the RV pulls in and Homer kind of gets really jealous. Oh, this is, they have an RV and super Homer, nice. Super nice. So Homer's like, okay, I want to go get the best RV. So they head over to the RV shop. The sign entering the car lot, we'd rather make a friend than a profit. Which, come on. you you go If you're going to a used RV lot, they're really going to try to sell you. Like, I don't think it was a used RV lot. I think it was well, just an, an RV, RV lot. lot. But I mean, you're going to buy something. Uh, a salesman in any day and age is going to do their best to be friends with you to take your money. Yes, exactly. All right. So what does Homer look for in an RV? The ultimate... Are you asking me or? I, I was going to ask you to kind of segue, but. Oh, well, you know, so uh, the salesman takes him to the ultimate behemoth RV. Like this thing is, I mean, I think this RV might be as you know, as big as a house, maybe like a small house. Uh, so in this ultimate behemoth RV, it is two stories high with a fireplace, a full kitchen, four deep fryers, one for each part of the chicken. Cause clearly the salesman knows Homer is a glutton, uh, a big screen television set, its own satellite, the van star one satellite orbiting the planet. Yep. Uh, so when did the first portable satellite dish come out? So I'm curious. So this is a future prediction alert here for the sin. This is the first one episode season one, episode seven. From what I could tell of all the episodes we've done so far, this is, yeah. this is numero uno. So the first portable satellite dish for RVs and cars did not up, did not happen until 1996. Yeah, and they're, they're that's just six comparing. years, man. That's yeah, a good time gap. I mean, yep. like, did like I'm sure RVs have been around for a while, so I can't. I mean, yes, they most likely predicted the future on this, but I think it was something foreseeable, just because I think in the 1990s, you know, everybody had a television set, everybody watched TV. I think it was just a matter of time before RVs got a satellite dish. Yeah, I mean, but satellites were bigger in the night. I mean, they were huge. They, that's true. That's true. They, it was more of a size thing. And the portable ones, I mean, I personally didn't get my first look at a portable one until probably 2005. So, I mean, they might have been available in 1996, but I'm guessing they definitely weren't cheap in 1996. They, oh, God. They were no. probably still horribly expensive. I mean... The ones in like 2005, 2007, the ones that I started seeing were from like Dish Network and you could get those for your cabin, you know, up north or, you know, for your RV or something like that, just to, to have something portable and you can watch with your, I mean, even these portable ones in, you know, the early 2000s, you could take out on like a fishing boat, plug into a yeah. T- 
TV and, and watching your boat while you fish or in your ice house out on out on a lake. So yeah. the very pretty... first very first prediction alert from the Simpsons. So and then after that they uh you know, the salesman's like, All right, well, let's see if we can get you into this bad boy and he takes him to the office. And I love the fact that the first sign you see in the credit office is bankruptcy schmankruptcy. Like they don't, they like they don't care if you're bankrupt. They don't care. Like they'll take you no matter what. And uh, so, guy goes to run the the credit uh, score, and a siren goes off. And to be honest, I mean, I've only had my credit run a few times. And in this day and age, you just you know you do it all over the internet. Um, I don't know if that was really a thing in the '90s. So if we have some older listeners out there no it's not it's a joke i know come on uh, um, and so homer's like is that a is that a good siren and the guy's like have you ever known to be a siren to be good so clearly bad credit uh he takes him to uh a really beat up rv and he you know pawns it off on homer because he's like oh see that guy over there he just called me this morning about it you know clearly using salesman tactics so uh homer instead of conferring with marge buys a really bad rv and they decide to go camping and uh where did he, where did he get the money for that one if his credits i mean how bad could it be that is that that they don't care if you're bankrupt and have no money to buy an rv that even getting that one to be fair that rv was so dilapidated uh, i just gave it to him they it's probably like were just like, for a hundred dollars, we'll give you this RV. Like, I mean, that thing was just awful. Uh, so yeah, well, family family camping. We never went family camping. No, but we did do. I mean, we were both part of the Boy Scouts, and we yeah, also went to summer camp. So I mean, we did our fair. Camping. What? That's not family. That's not family camping. I I I know. I was gonna say that, but uh, I mean, I don't know if mom ever went with you on the boy scouts for the camping trips, I know she went with me. So it was kind of, I mean, yes, we never went camping as a family. I mean, I, I don't think our dad really would want to do that. No, it was mostly hotels. Like yeah. we would go to the Dells. We stay in, we do like outdoorsy stuff. Like we, we go, we went, used to go fishing every year. Oh yeah. We, I mean, I don't know if we ever did. I mean, I did it on my own, like when horseback riding. But I've never been ha- horseback riding. Oh, okay. like I mean, actual like camping. No, that was all Boy Scouts, and that was about it. I mean, I don't know if, as our family, could have standed a, a single day in the woods <laughs> together. Camping. Yeah. I think that would have ended very poorly. I love you all, but uh, <laughs> I mean. I don't even, I, I, I don't know. You probably wrote, would remember more, but I don't even remember camping out in the backyard. No, no. I mean, maybe we popped a tent and just did it for fun. I'm not a hundred percent. I don't ever remember sleeping outdoors, living at, at our house, but like, I mean, I've done a lot of camping. I love being outdoors. Do not get me wrong, but uh, yeah, family camping. Uh, no, thanks. So, but, but what we can all agree on is games we play in the car when we are going places. What was like, your favorite game to play on a road trip? I mean, to me, and I still play it to this day, is the uh, letter game. Where yep. you look at a billboard, license plate, whatever, and like call out the letter that you see. And the yep. other person in the car can't use it. Yep. But uh, the, Simpsons, yeah. the Simpsons, they <laughs> play a game called What's That Older? <laughs> And according to, uh, what was it, Lisa, it was uh, Homer's feet? Yeah. yeah. It's always Homer. Homer's yeah. the, the so the one. one. The one thing that got me while they were driving through the shortcut in the RV it was, so there was a song playing, and then Homer starts whistling to the song, and now maybe the radio is on, but for the life of me, I just thought the song was like, you know, the song they played over the scene. So, like, was that a meta thing? or did they actually have the radio on? No, I don't think they had the radio on in the car. So Homer was singing to the song playing over the scene. Yep. That's weird and very meta. Yes. I, 
<laughs> I mean, maybe Homer, maybe it's like Homer's internal uh, song? song or theme maybe. song. I was, just, so, I was just like, wait a second. The song is playing over the scene and Homer's whistling it. And I'm like, I don't remember them turning on a radio. I mean, maybe yeah. he did. So for how crappy this RV was, they can drive it anywhere. Yep. Straight through the woods, through a river, off a cliff. It was amphibious. It was an amphibious I RV. I mean, and Marvel and Marge was like, Homer, I can feel the water around my feet. It's okay. It'll be fine. Um, my so question next, is, though, how deep was that river then? I mean, I mean, Jeeps can go through standing, as long as they have like a snorkel on it. Jeeps can go through like standing yeah. river water. I mean, Obviously, I, I don't a, think this RV had a snorkel on it. No. I mean, I drive a four-door sedan. I've been able to drive my car through a decent-sized puddle of water, of standing water. I almost got stuck. I made it through, but, I mean, this RV was is, garbage. I mean, yeah. So, another thing that we learned this episode after they dro- drove it off a cliff, and obviously cartoons are different than real life, yeah. but we have... But the funny thing about this is we have seen this in movies and TV shows, Oh, yeah. Um, Groundhog's big... Day is a great example. Yep, so it caused a big explosion when it fell off the cliff and hit the ground. The Mythbusters, the TV show, yep. busted that myth. Cars, trucks, any form of... I mean... I mean, said... I think it does It does make sense, though, that if you were to drive a car off a cliff, it would not explode. Um, I, I'm curious to watch that episode now, just because I feel like... I don't know what the the episode caught, you know, you know how far the cliff was and I mean, was how much gas big. was in the tank. I mean, they they did a lot of several. I mean, they did several different. You know, the Mythbusters, man. Yeah. They test they tested to the extreme. It, it it does boggle my mind though that a car wouldn't explode because I feel like, I mean, I guess you would need fire. So if a car crashed off a cliff, it wouldn't burst into flames. It would leak oil. And gasoline. So unless there was a spark or something, yeah, it probably wouldn't explode. I mean, realistically, they said that, so the only way for the car to really explode would be the car would have to be almost on fire as it crashed. But if it's not, by the time the car hits the ground, the engine is already dead. Like, everything's busted. And so there's no more sparks or ignitions. Yeah. Um, So after that, the... First thing you see after they're kind of stranded, vultures yeah. circling the Simpsons. They're dead. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I did. Well, I think we both wrote this uh, down. Maggie is not wearing uh, blue. She's wearing purple. Yep. But uh, I'm after pretty I wrote... sure. I'm pretty sure in previous episodes she was in blue. But, yes, but the the other thing I didn't notate, and after a while I kind of I figured this out. The entire Simpsons family isn't wearing their normal outfits. Oh. I thought Homer was. Uh, his shirt was a little bit different. Oh. And Marge was wearing more of a like camping style, like that's I don't think true. It was flannel, but so I think all of them changed. But Maggie is kind of a weird situation. Yeah. But I, I mean, may, maybe that was just an animation mistake. Maybe they just drew her purple, or maybe maybe purple is her camping clothes. Who knows? Yes, purple is her camping clothes. Um. So the this is also the first episode of Homer falling off a cliff. Uh, Bart does go too, but as we know in future episodes, Homer does take a lot of falls off cliffs and mountains and stuff. I so, know it's a cartoon, but how does he survive everything? I it very <laughs> carefully. He falls with style. Yes, falls with uh, falls with falls in a way that it won't kill him, but just break all the bones in his body. Yep, so after Bart and Homer fall off the cliff, well, so let's backtrack a little bit. So Marge and Lisa don't know anything about camping. Homer nope. builds a horrible shanty house. Yeah. But they're like, okay, we're going to go search for help. And then Maggie falls. And I love how Lisa's like, should Maggie be going with them? And Marge is like, well, Homer's an experienced outdoorsman. They'll be fine. And then, but I don't think Bart and Homer knew that Maggie was actually. No, because, uh, they were walking through the woods. Maggie, like, snuck up on them. They freaked out, which caused them to go into the river and fall off the cliff. And then uh, Bear approaches Maggie and takes Maggie... Uh, uh, Maggie gives the bear a pacifier 
and they go back to the bear's cave. Yep. So apparently, as we'll get into later a little bit, bears in this episode are really smart. And they're really smart in The Simpsons, apparently. Oh, yes. We'll get, that. We'll get into that in a little bit. So after that, Bart and Homer, they fall off the cliff. And they fall off the cliff and lose all their clothes. How do you lose all your clothes? I mean, I guess if you hit a bunch of rocks, but then you'd be dead. Like, I have jumped into a lake with all my clothes on. Now, granted, I didn't fall 50 feet into a lake. But, like, I've seen people cliff dive into lakes and they keep all their clothes on. And I get it's, it's a cartoon of- and it's for comedic effect, but... I, I don't think you could lose all your clothes. No, I think it's also the I think it might be the Charlie Brown syndrome syndrome where you know oh, you, throw, yeah. you, you hit a ball, you throw Charlie Brown throws the ball, the ball comes back at him, and he does it's like a, a flip everywhere and all his clothes fall, fall off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love, the, then they, I love the fact that Bart uh Homer is like uh you're you're naked, Bart, and Bart is like, Yeah, so are you. <laughs> well, and then Homer teaches them how to how to put on leaves with uh, mud and yeah. like that. I don't was... know if that would actually work. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it worked in the Bible. I think yeah. we could call it, call it okay. So then Homer tries to teach Bart how to, you know, be an outdoorsman, even though yeah. he knows, like he even like kind of went off in, in the beginning. It's like, okay, we're screwed. Like, yeah. He, even though his family could hear him, he, he doesn't know that. So he yeah. tries to teach Bart. Homer makes a little trap and flings the rabbit. <laughs> I mean, that must have been a really strong springy tree because I don't think you yeah. could just grab a tree, tie it off, and plus pull it I down. don't know how you tie that off without rope. Exactly. Um, and then then he goes into the the thing to flush out a rabbit and gets attacked by like every animal imaginable. <laughs> Squirrel, snake, another rabbit. Yep, and I did right now. This is a very Looney, to- Looney Tunes episode. Yeah, like, this this is definitely this definitely screams Looney Tunes esque. Because okay, they flung fling a rabbit in the air, they fall off a cliff. I mean, you, I, I mean, this is I, the first season is definitely not based in real physics. No, um, so now we kind of flash over to Maggie. Maggie, well, she obviously diffused the bear with a pacifier and then brought to the cave. Yeah. Um, and then the bears kind of look at each other like, oh, she must be hungry. She needs yeah. other things to survive. So the bears go out into the woods, and I do like the family that they, the one bear runs into. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no bears, no out bears. out here. There's any bears out here or right here. Come get me. See, there are no bears. And then from behind, the, the bear yeah. takes the bottle. Yeah. Um, I do like, so after Homer and, uh, Bart go in the woods, they cut back to March and Lisa, they make a beautiful campsite and March is sweeping. And then after that, they do all the other stuff. They go back and their campground looks really nice. Marge is, has like apparently made squirrel dummies. I, I don't know. Like they weren't real squirrel. I mean, like. She is she a taxidermist? I don't know. I mean, it's and then Lisa, seems... but then Lisa is sweeping the campsite, and it's like, why are they sweeping the campsite? They're it's outdoors. Dirty. Well, Marge kind of is like, we got to make this like home. But the funny thing is, they don't have saws, they don't have rope, they don't have, no. they don't have anything to actually make anything, and so like... <laughs> the RV is gone. I mean, maybe yeah. they had that equipment on the RV. But they obviously don't now. But no. that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, maybe Marge is actually the outdoorsy person. Person and Homer and Bart not so much. And Maggie loves bears. And, well, here's the thing. I think Maggie is a god to the bears. You think so? Maybe because, like, you know, they go get her. They bring her toys. They bring her food. Like, they want her to stay there. Like. I, I, maybe she's a deity to them. I, I don't know. She brought him a pacifier. But also bears. The, bear, but the bears were done and they brought her back after Yeah, it was all over. Um, so so My, Homer once again is trying to you know, show Bart how to get food and he's like, yeah. ooh, honey. Punches it, 
gets the honey out. I mean, just so dumb. Like I said, Looney Tunes. I mean, yeah. he gets bees in his mouth, falls in the mud. He's like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. and then the camp, the camp, the not the camper. Oh, yeah, one of the other campers is with the cam- camera. He's like, oh, but Big it's fun. so funny. You look at the video footage of it. It's obviously a guy in mud. mud. He's yeah. dripping. He's not hairy. No. Um, like so, like who's the anchor man who tells the people about Bigfoot? Like it's not Kent Brockman. No, like where did this? Like where is I? I wrote is the television station set in Springfield? Like, yeah, you just don't. I mean, I mean it almost seems like a nationally syndicated. Like, because I know in future episodes they do show Fox News, and I think they show CNN. So like. He kind of sounds like the guy who voices Kent Brockman, but clearly the animation style is not Kent Brockman. And it's just like, who is this guy? And like, apparently there was like a presidential debate and there was not a presidential debate, uh, unless it was some uh, random like union presidential debate. I don't know. And like, cause it was 1990. There was no presidential election in 1990. Yeah. It's really like, weird. So, okay. So yeah. Right. Uh, so I wrote this down as Bigfoot history and it yeah. started in 1958, but the biggest thing that I, I wrote is it started in Bluff Creek, California. So one of the biggest debates over time is where is Springfield? Like that's been one of the biggest debates where, where in the world, I mean, or the United States, where, where is Springfield? So it doesn't really, exist. Well, yes, but you kind of want to get a pinpoint location. But so here's the I, problem with that, because at like, there's an episode way down the line where they stand in the five corners of the United States, where they stand in five states. You can't do that in real life. No, no, no. I know. is a non-existent place in the United States, and I, I think get that. But I'm saying that people are trying to figure out where it. It might be like. Dude, Metropolis isn't real, but people try to figure out where in the United States that but is. But here's the, here's the other thing with Bigfoot. Bigfoot has been spotted everywhere. So well, mostly, I, I can't, you, nah, not really everywhere. Mostly the West Coast, mostly Northern California and Oregon and Seattle, that region. No I, one's I, ever I, been in Maine and been like, I saw Bigfoot. I, I'm pretty sure... I can't remember if it was Graining or somebody from the Simpsons staff. I think they came out and actually said where it was. And it wasn't in the West Coast. But, I mean, they could have... Here's the other thing. They they took an RV. They could have traveled. Anywhere. Yes, but see, that's, that's what I'm wondering. Where did they go? I thought maybe they just went to Springfield National Forest or something. You I know, can't around, remember. Like, around like the Springfield Gorge area. But I mean knows? it could be. Okay. I mean so that would put it it would put it in the western part of the US cuz I mean yep. there aren't many gorges in the US that I'm aware of. Yep, but see that's that but that's the thing. Like where so that might be west coast. Maybe <laughs> we'll we'll dig deeper in that. Okay, so we, now we get to the newspaper headlines <laughs> after so they're interviewing Marge yeah. on you know what you know, she married Bigfoot, you know, what he likes. So the headlines were, I married Bigfoot. Yep. Bigfoot's wife pleads, call him Homer. <laughs> and the Bigfoot diet, pork chops aplenty. <laughs> and I do like the fact that they obviously just don't, no one gets it. Like, yes, there was the video footage, but no one understands. And then they have, completely after that, they wash Homer off. He's sitting in, sitting in a yeah. glass glass case. He's obviously human. Bigfoot yeah. is furry. Like you, like come on. I mean, it just uh, seems. I, then, so apparently, according to this episode, um, Doctor Marvin Monroe is the head scientist of this panel, which which is weird because he's a psychiatrist, not a zoologist. Yes, so exactly. Like, and I like how like he's like, oh yeah, this is definitely Bigfoot, and other guys like, no, this is not Bigfoot. And like but clearly, it's, it's not Mar- Bigfoot. It's Homer. Like you look at the, as you said before, you look at the video footage. It's clearly a guy in mud. But Marvin Monroe has met Homer. He has seen him face to face. Yeah, I don't see how he did not. It's kind of like 
the other the Bart the General episode where Homer was looking in the tree and didn't yeah. notice that it was grandpa. It's like maybe the entire city of Springfield is drinking too much nuclear power plant water. They're just and bad eyesight. Bad eyesight. They're gone. Yeah. Um, to close out the episode, we see Homer sleeping on the left once again. Yeah. With Marge. Yeah. So, closing thoughts on the episode? Uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, it definitely showed, you know, I, now that we're talking about this, it definitely shows that, you know what? Women can do whatever men can do. And sometimes, you know, that's being outdoorsy because Lisa and Marge clearly knew how to be campers and Homer and Bart clearly didn't. So, I don't know it if might, that was intended that way. But... It might have been. It might have been a. It's not as hard as it looks thing. Yeah. And Marge and Lisa made it really easy. I mean, I don't. I guess I really can't say what the idea behind that was. Yeah. Um, but before but that people... was. That was pretty was gonna... interesting. Uh you know, all 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 the classic pratfalls, RV off the cliff, Homer flinging. A rabbit. I mean, it was a good episode. Uh, not one of their best. It did flow well. Uh, you know, again, it shows Homer is an idiot. He doesn't trust his wife to help make decisions. Uh, very 90-esque, you know, episode. Uh, didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Uh, I will give it a uh, three. Uh, don't have a cow, man. Okay. What I was going to say before you interrupted me is we have a scale Oh, that, that maybe the people would like to hear before we, I mean, I know we started this a few episodes ago with the, with the whole list, but just in case people are catching up, um, yeah. number one, we rated it on a scale of one to five, uh, one being a dough, three being and everything's coming up, Millhouse. And in the that's middle, five. Got, you said three. five. Sorry, five. And then in the middle, we got two, eat my shorts, three, don't have a cow, man, and four, mm, sprinkles. So uh, I give it a three, don't have a cow, man. It's a good episode. Um, clearly, there's some issues with them not realizing. And I get it. Like, you know, people like like to claim they saw Bigfoot. And like, it's usually just a guy in a costume or just, you know, blur stuff. I do like the meme, though. Or like a com comedian once said, uh, what if it's not the camera that's blurry? What if Bigfoot himself is blurry? Yeah, uh, but the funny thing was, is the footage was perfect. It was yeah. spot on. Was it and it clearly looked like a guy. And so people are like, oh, it's Bigfoot. Uh, so, you know, take it or leave it. I'll give it a don't have a cow, man. All right, I'm with you on that. Uh, pretty much the same reasons. The only, The only saving grace, I think, for the episode is you do learn a little bit of more, a little bit more about the Simpsons financial status, yeah. kind of delve into the Simpsons family. Maybe the, the, I don't know if it's necessarily the starting hatred of Flanders or kind of the <laughs> myths of the hating of Flanders, but it well, really kind of gives us that dynamic between Homer and Ned and why Homer almost becomes friends with Ned so we could start taking all of Ned's property as we learn in the future everything has oh, property yeah. that Ned Flanders on. It's like, okay, you know, he might be have more money, he might have nicer stuff. I better become friends with this guy even though I really hate his guts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go with uh don't have a cow man. Yeah. So let's close it off. Um character profile. We have Bob, <laughs> the uh the salesman Bob. Um, his occupation is Bob's RV Roundup. Um, he doesn't own the place. Uh, long story, so we won't, <laughs> won't get into that. Uh, like he tells Homer, he's not the owner. Yeah. Um, profile: the ultimate shark salesman. I mean, he does have that mentality. You kind of see oh, it yeah. in his, in his uh, style. His attire: wears a cowboy hat and a sly smile. Yep intuition knows a sucker when he sees one <laughs> at me homer homer is a yep. sucker his slogan we'd rather make a friend than a prophet yep and the hottest item an rv <laughs> that not only has its own satellite dish but its own satellite yeah so that, that's bob bob to that's a t bob. 
So uh, let's close it out here. Um, you can find us on Facebook, The Simpsons Did It, Instagram, at The Simpsons Did It Pod. Um, uh, the hosting sites, uh, we're on pretty much everything now. Uh, yep. Apple, Google, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, Stitcher. Those are the five big ones. Uh, and we're on a lot of small ones too. Um, so however you want to listen to us, uh, go for it. If we are not on something uh, that you might want to listen to, you can always message us on Instagram or Facebook. And yep. I can give you our RSS, RSS feed. And there's a uh, uh, app called it's called Podcast Addict, where you can actually add a uh, RSS feed um, oh. straight to it and nice. use that as your as as your platform. So if you do want to use that app, and that's where you listen to all your podcasts, just send us a message, and we will hook you up with that. Um. So until next time, uh, I'm Steven Sklansky. I'm Robert Skolansky. And as always, The Simpsons did it. Shh.